So, you know, one thing I want you to kind of think about when we, when we talk about um, the music that we listened to this week. I had to listen to a lot of music, a lot of posse cuts, um, which means, you know, songs featuring many of the members of, of the Native Tongues Collective, okay, um, and just a bunch of joints, you know, a bunch of, uh, a bunch of stuff. Now, what are some of the similarities? Sample material, a lot of jazz stuff, right? A lot of jazz sounds. This is very unique um, to the native tongues, um, specifically Tribe Called Quest. I mean, I used to look at the liner notes to know what jazz records to buy um, because they'd list the stuff they sampled in the credits and you'd kind of know what what to go find (coughs) if they cleared it, Um, you know, but eclectic sample source material, just different stuff. You maybe don't even hear any James Brown or, or any ultimate breaks and beats whatsoever. Uh, lyrics that are positive, lyrics that are playful, lyrics about, you know, Afrocentricity, um, you know, lyrics about sexual exploration. Um, not super complicated songs, like rhyme patterns and stuff, stuff like that. But, you know, relatable content, I think, is, is, is something you could think of because these were young people. And, you know, if you were young coming up listening to this, you, you could understand some of the things they were, they were talking about. Um, they weren't talking about, you know, um, a lot of the stuff that you would see in later, you know, crime rap, later gangster rap, um, you know, stuff like that. I mean, they would, they would talk about some of the circumstances of being in, you know, New York area, uh, urban America as, as black, black men and women, um, but not in the same sense, you know. The, there, there was not a lot of um, objectifying females. There was not a lot of drug talk. It was always very, very, very playful. Um, you know, yeah, and, and just, you know, uplifting, kind of fun, feel-good music, you know, um, and, and then, you know, again, it, it's hard to say, like, what are the samesies? Like, listening to, like, De La Soul, Three Feet High, or De La Soul uh, is Dead, because they're very different, although both produced by Prince Paul, and, like, A Tribe Called Quest, Low End Theory, or Midnight Marauders that have a very, very different sounds, where, like, Midnight Marauders has super snappy, uh, and, and, and uh, Midnight Marauders and Low End Theory have super snappy drums and super dope, like, low-end bass lines and kick thuds and all that stuff, um, you know, versus uh, uh, Early De La Soul, which was Prince Paul, like, you know, just hooking up all these different, different loops in various ways and different sounds and making these pretty eclectic collages. All right, so who are the Native Tongues? A lot of, you know, the Native Tongues, you know, really start with uh, Jungle Brothers. And let's just say, like, these are all, people are all friends. Um, You know, they all were making music, you know, that all kind of had a similar vibe and they decided, like, they really vibed out with one another. But, it, you know, the Jungle Brothers were kind of like the start of it all. And uh, it really goes back to um, Cool DJ Red Alert. Red, um, you know, is a pioneer uh, hip-hop DJ. Uh, he's a Zulu Nation DJ with Africa Bambada, Jazzy J, DXT, you know, all those people. He's from Harlem. Um, but, you know, he really got down with the Bronx scene. He, he's had a long, long, historic run in uh, hip-hop rap radio in New York City, a pioneer in that sense, from, from the early 80s, you know, on. Um, he was uh, a, 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 an important, integral part um, in the Bridge Wars. If you remember, we were talking about the Bridge war, Wars with Marley Marl and MC Shan. Well, Marl was a radio DJ. Uh, Red was a radio DJ, so Red was the one who played all the um, the Boogie Down Pro- Productions uh, records by KRS One and Boogie Down Productions, like uh, South Bronx and The Bridge Is Over and stuff like that. They they were playing that stuff, so he was a se- essential in, in that. He had a management company uh, and he managed talent, um, you know, Tribe, um, you know, JB's Jungle Brothers, all that stuff. 
Um, you know, so he's just like, you know, I think they call him Uncle Red, you know, I mean, he's just like a staple in, in hip hop culture, rap music, all, all that stuff. But, you know, the, the essential members are Jungle Brothers, um, De La Soul, um, Tribe Called Quest, uh, Queen Latifah, uh, Black Sheep, who are actually from, I believe, Drez and Mr. Long are from North Carolina, um, Chi Ali, uh, Money Love, and then there's all these like associated acts like um, Leaders of the New School with Busta Rhymes, who were on the, the track Scenario, famous tribe song, um, you know, the Beat Nuts. So there were all these like sort of related acts. And what Red really did is, you know, if you look at, you know, a lot of the album covers, um, you know, they had these, you know, these, this, this vibe to them, you know, this Afrocentric vibe in so many ways um, with, with, with the green, red uh, and black, um, you know, and just the vibe of, of all these records, you know, were so different than from what had preceded them and a lot of other records that would, would come after um, in, that, in that time period. I mean, Black Sheep was kind of the Black Sheep of, of Native Tongues, like they had more sexually explicit lyrics, uh, more objectifying lyrics, because that was like part of their shtick. Um, not shtick, but style, you know, uh, so to speak. So, um, yeah, Money Love, who's from the UK. Um, just a real seminal group of artists come out of this era who all kind of just were like, yo, we're on the same vibe, we're on the same tip, like we should make music together, and that's what they did. 